Okay guys, today I'm coming to you with a more in-depth video on superworm pupation. Recently I've been asked quite a few questions in the comment section about pupation, so I figured I'd provide a better explanation than I did in my superworm breeding guide, and give a few examples. After all, it was my first video, and I could have done better on it. However, it is by far my most viewed video. So this video is my 100 subscriber special. I only planned 4 videos this month, but since hitting this milestone, and various questions I've been asked, I decided to whip this video up for you guys and thank you for the journey that we've had together thus far. Let's start with picking worms and how I go about doing it. I isolate the worms I feel are large enough into a bin alone and I feed them fresh every day. I don't exactly measure them, I just kind of eyeball it. Ideally, you want them to be a bit plump and quite long. I've gotten used to doing it, I rarely have to put worms back because I chose ones that were not ideal. To increase your chances of having all of your worms pupate, provide them with a constant supply Apply of fresh veggies a few days, preferably weeks, before pupation. This helps get them fat and store up a lot of moisture for their metamorphosis. If you are having problems with worms not always pupating, try this. I can almost guarantee that you will have better results. I placed around 30 worms into isolation this round. I've seen a lot of debate on what causes them to pupate online. The channel Leopard Gecko has a good video on this where she proves several different conditions work, and the one thing that remained the same across all of of her pupation conditions was isolation. Her video is linked below if you want to know what and how she tested it. Ideally, you want worms approaching 1.5 to 2 inches in length. The second biggest factor is how fat they are. I don't suggest trying to cause a worm to pupate if it is long enough but isn't a little fat. This is a good comparison. This worm is a chonky boy and is ready to become a beetle. I wouldn't bother with this one until it was larger. Just keep feeding them until they grow big and fat. You want a healthy beetle. So these are my jars after the worms have pupated. I have since added new worms into the cycle, and as you can see, they are in condiment cups from my previous video. Some of the worms have yet to pupate, though sometimes I have to put a few back. If it goes on longer than a week and a half before curling up into a sea, I place the worm back and let them grow. The worm will stay in the pupa stage for a few weeks. It will slowly darken over time. You can use this to predict which one will hatch first, as the legs and eyes get darker and darker more features of the beetle can be seen more clearly. I do not have any complete footage of a beetle emerging. I've read that you can apparently sex them in this stage. I'm going to be showing close-ups for a moment of the area to my understanding that you are supposed to be able to tell the sexes apart. However, they all basically look the same to me. So I think I'm either looking at the wrong spot or the info I read was wrong. Their faces have not developed enough at this point to use my method either. However, it may be a possibility as time progresses. I'll have to try sometime. But I will be sexing this entire batch of beetles in another video, after they hatch, along with setting up a small colony that has a controlled ratio of females and males of 3 to 1. I'm planning on starting the colony off with 16 beetles, 12 females, and 4 males, and expanding in a few months with a follow-up video of their yield versus my larger colony of over 100 members. I will be comparing the cardboard collections of both colonies and looking at the egg density. That's all I have for you today guys without dragging this video out for too long. If you have it in your insect loving heart, give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos like this in the future. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day. And thank you once again for reaching 100 subscribers.